Good morning, happy Sabbath, and I'm so glad that you guys are able to join us for our children's program this morning from wherever you are, at home, in your car, um, in your bedroom, sitting on your bed, wherever you are, we are so happy that you're able to join us. If you guys would like to join me in prayer, um, go ahead and bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the technology and the ability to come together and to worship you, even though we are all apart in um, so many different ways. We ask, Lord, that you can be in our hearts, you can be the center of our homes, that way as we go out and we talk to others and we are out and about, that others can see you shining through us. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This morning, we have been, well, this morning, we're going to be talking about goodness. And um, over the past couple weeks, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, program, and have a great Sabbath. Welcome to a brand new quarter. This quarter, we're going to learn about the West Central African Division. This division is comprised of 22 countries, many of which are some of the world's poorest countries. To the west, it borders the Atlantic Ocean, and to the north, it borders the Sahara Desert. And I am so happy that in our church family, we have a couple who serve there as missionaries. And today, I'd like to interview them so that we can find out about this interesting division. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Bonjour et bon sabbat. My name is Elizabeth Santa Cruz. And my, my name is Jose Luis Santa Cruz. I, I am pastor, Seventh-day Adventist pastor. I work as a director in Burkina Faso, in West Africa, right here in the capital city, which is called Ouagadougou. And I work as a president of the mission in Burkina Faso for seven years. The headquarters of the division is located right here in Ivory Coast. In that division, the church has 834,000 members, and all the population of the division is 433 million of people. That means that we have one Adventist among 522 people. In the country where we live, in Burkina Faso, and in all that region in West Africa, it's very, very hot. 
for nine months, we never would see a rain. It was extremely dry. And that all because it is right below the big Sahara Desert in the desert that is called the Sahel. In that country, people speak different languages, but the most spoken one is the More. Also, the French is the uh, official language. This country has a population mostly uh, Muslim. We have also some countries that are totally Christian. I'd like to know why are we meeting here under the shadow of a nice tree? In Burkina Faso, by the time when we worked, um, most of the churches didn't have a place where children could meet to worship the Lord. Some churches had a little one place where all children, all, age, all ages, were sitting together and without having any resource, they would have their Sabbath school. Some other parts, they didn't have not even that single room. So we had to meet under the shadow of a beautiful tree, sitting on the ground. Thanks to your Sabbath school offering, three years ago, our churches over there were able to build some nice rooms for our children so that now they can meet, even if it's raining, if it is, if it is windy, if the sun is brightened, um, children can attend Sabbath school without having any problem. And I wish that during this 13th Sabbath, you bring your offerings so that the gospel continue reaching other children and mothers and fathers in that beautiful division. This is a very nice song that we learned while we were in Wagadugu. Barca, barca wenam, barca, barca wenam, barca, barca wenam en su Barca, barca wenam, barca, barca wenam, barca, barca wenam en su May the Lord bless you. That's the meaning of the song. Que le Señor venís. Thank you so much for telling us about the West Africa Division. And now I invite you to participate with your offerings so that we can give so that more children and adults can learn about Jesus there. Hi again, friends. Let's go explore the backyard. Today I have a creature for you that you've seen before. Remember those tadpoles? Well, look what they have become. They are now little tiny toads. These ones up on the rock are ready to just hop away and explore the world. But there's a lot of them in there. Some of them at the bottom you can see have tails and they have front legs and back legs and those tails are being absorbed right now. They don't eat until the tail goes away then they come out of the water and they're ready to explore. And then look over here, we have the larger tadpoles. So these, have, most of them have back legs and pretty soon the front legs will come out and then they'll just be like these toads over here. And then it rained not too long ago and there were more eggs in that puddle by the road. And so here's some more little tiny tadpoles that I saved from that puddle. These toads are Great Basin Spadefoot Toads. And these are special toads that are well adapted to live in dry areas. And they are toads, which means that they are pretty comfortable on land. And so what they will do to protect themselves from getting too dried out is that they will dig a burrow and they will live in that burrow in the ground. And as the ground gets drier and drier, they will dig deeper and deeper. 
and they could be like two to three feet deep underground. And they have been known to be as deep as 15 feet underground. That's really deep. Then the toads will come up out of their burrow at nighttime when it's cooler, and they'll also come up maybe during rain and they'll go hunting and they are looking for bugs. And um, they will eat insects like ants and beetles are some of their favorites. So these little toads will grow a little bigger. You can see how big this one is compared to my fingers. And it's called a spade foot toad because on its back legs, it has some long toenails that are growing. And it uses those to dig its burrow. They will get a little bit bigger. They can be one and a half to two and a half inches long. Some people have a hard time figuring out the difference between a frog and a toad. So there are some differences. One thing is that toads generally live on land and frogs like to be in water a lot of the time. And frogs have skin that is wet and kind of slimy. And a toad has drier skin and it's more bumpy. And it has like um, things that some people think are warts. They're not warts at all. And actually you don't have to worry about handling a toad. People used to think that handling a toad would give you warts on your skin, but that's not true. So you don't have to worry about that. Although you do need to make sure you wash your hands after you touch a toad or a frog because there can be some things on their skin that could be harmful to you. There's a lot of good things about a toad. It's really good that they eat insects and the bugs that might be around your garden. It is really a good thing to play with them and they hop around and it's, it's pretty fun to pick them up and play with them. I think most kids really like frogs and toads, don't you think? So anyway, there's a lot of good things about a toad. This week we're talking about the fruit of the spirit of goodness. And when I think about goodness in the Bible, I think of Jesus himself. He came to this earth and everything he did was good. He was so good to people and all of the miracles that he did and everything he did was just very good. David in Psalm 23 wrote that the Lord is my shepherd and he's talking about Jesus as a good shepherd taking care of his sheep and his sheep would be us and the good shepherd will lead his sheep to good food and take care of it and protect it against its enemies and it also says that surely goodness and mercy will be with me all of my life and so you see it's Jesus that can give the same goodness that he has and he demonstrated for us, he can give that to us if we ask. So I hope that you ask today for Jesus to come into your heart and for you to have some of that goodness in your life. And I think people around you will notice. Okay, friends, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Um, just wanted to speak with you briefly. Um, we have been discussing the fruits of the Spirit, and um, just wanted to discuss with you today goodness. Um, so first off, I had a friend of mine help me um, just get some ideas about what to speak about, and um, he and I discussed um, something to kind of hook you guys right out the gate. So we discussed superheroes. And what does that mean? How does that tie into our Christian walk? Um, in general, we discussed um, Spider-Man, and uh, sounds crazy, Spider-Man, Superman, but all these characters that were created by another man has um, good sides, bad sides. Um, Spider-Man did battle with the Green Goblin. Superman had Lex Luthor. Um, but we really came down to Spider-Man and his physical attributes. He would sling his web all through the city, fly all over the place. Um, he was super strong. But when we look at Peter Parker, he was an inherently good person. But there was also a character um, 
with uh, Spider-Man named Venom who came and kind of changed Spider-Man and made him do bad things. And Spider-Man had to fight this character in order to remain good. So we see here a struggle between good and evil and it was a constant battle with his bad side. And, um, but it kind of reminded us of our daily struggle in that we try to be inherently good, but we don't have the power to do that. We all have the power to, have, to do something great within ourselves with the help of the Lord. So how does Spider-Man and all this stuff apply to me? How does goodness work in me? Am I created for more in this life? And I believe fully that there is a superhero in all of us. What does the Bible have to say about goodness, though? In this day and age, especially right now with what's going on, we need goodness. We need to be able to rely on God to do good things, to make life for those around us a little better. So we've been talking about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness. Today, we're just going to look at goodness. So in the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God separated the light from the darkness, and the light was good. When God created Adam and Eve, it was good. When God finished his work in the whole creation week, he said it was good. In Deuteronomy, God took the children of Israel into the promised land, a good land, a land of plenty, a land of enough. Everything that the children of Israel needed was there. It was good. So to me, in the Bible, goodness means it's complete. It's whole, it's sufficient, it's abundant. The good was enough. Um, so in Romans 12, 21, it says, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like superhero stuff to me. Overcoming evil with good. So to me, that means when we walk into a room and someone is hurting, we do good. If someone is in pain, we do good. If people, if someone is confused, they're easy to take advantage of, we do good. When other people are being mean to someone, we do good. We be nice. So how do we preserve this goodness in this day and age? When we walk into a place and we stand up for what is good, we now become a source of light. We are to light wherever we go. We are the light in the dark place wherever we are. We don't have to prove we can say we, we now become a source of light in a dark place, and when we stand for what is right, we don't have to prove anything to anyone. We are complete. We are enough. We are sufficient when we stand in the light. God's, God's righteousness will shine through us. His goodness will shine through me and all that we are and there will be something different about you. So walking into this room and we have light, we have goodness, all those around us are going to notice there's something different about this person. There is a light despite the darkness around you. Isn't that awesome? I think so. And honestly, I'm still trying to work on that myself. So in this story or this talk, I, we came across a story about this man, and he wanted to know what the meaning of life was. So the man, Alexander Papaderos, was born on the island of Crete during the Second World War. <coughs> and his hometown was destroyed by Nazi Germans. And when he was a child, he was in a concentration camp. So. Despite all that, he wanted to be a force for peace and forgiveness. 
he studied theology and opened an institute designed to promote peace and reconciliation. So he was giving a talk. He was giving a two-week talk, and this talk, these talks went on for about two weeks. At the end of these two weeks, he asked a question, simple question. What is the meaning of life? There was nervous laughter. It's such a big question, everyone thought. But it was answered. Someone asked, you know, what is the meaning of life to this professor? He opened up his wallet, took out a small round mirror, held it up for everyone to see. During the war, he was a small boy, and one of the German soldiers had wrecked a motorcycle or a, a vehicle, and there was pieces of mirror on the ground. So he picked up the biggest piece that he could find, and he kept that piece of mirror, and he would rub it on rocks until it became about the size of a quarter. And he would keep this in his wallet or wherever he was. And he noticed that if he would shine it from the sunlight, he could light dark places underground, into buildings, wherever it was. He could reflect that light into the dark places. So as he grew older, he knew that this was a metaphor of the Christian walk, that we are to reflect Christ, we are to reflect God's goodness. In his talk, he said, I am a fragment of a mirror whose design and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, with, what, with that I have, I can reflect light into dark places of the world, into the dark places in the hearts of men, and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see and do likewise. This is what I am about. This is the meaning of life. So to me, that story means we are to be that mirror. We are to reflect Christ. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and as a follower of Jesus, we are to reflect him. We are to be that mirror so that men may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We are to take that goodness and make it the opposite of evil. When we see evil, we are to reflect good. Our light is the goodness of Christ. When we reflect the light of Christ, his goodness, then we, we too can become superheroes for Christ. And we, we'll have our closing prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all our friends and our family. Um, please thank you that we could watch. We can watch this on TV or on your phone. Um, please help the people in the hospital, um, and the people at home. And please help this the rest of the day go, to go well. In your name in Jesus, amen. All right, so we all wanted to know what would happen if you popped the balloon while the paper mache was still wet. So we're fixing to find out. Put the last few pieces on here. It's just nice and gunky. All right, we're gonna find out what's happening. See if I can get it up. It goes. Well, <laughs> that wasn't quite as messy as I thought it was gonna be, but it says him. But anyway, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to pop it. And by the way, guys, that first on. one got the cameraman too. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> this should be exciting. there. Oh, good.
Snoopy. Oh, Goopy, it got a lot bigger than I thought it would. I don't think this is going to work. Just... Alright, I got a couple of puzzles for you to do while, we're, while I'm getting cleaned up, and then we'll get to the object lesson. theme is on goodness and the Bible tells us in Proverbs 22 17 that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine and so I hope my little explosions brought you a smile to your face so we want to talk about doing good for others well, one thing you can do good for others is bring something to them that will put a smile on their face and today Thanks to Double A Bakery, I have some chocolate chip cookies that they made that definitely will put a smile on my face. Mmm, this is so good. Really, really good. So, this week, what you do is pick your favorite dessert and share it with someone that you love. We'll put one of our favorite desserts on the screen for you. Thank you, have a great day, God bless.